ever heard of quantum computers? They have been a hotly debated topic among computer geeks and science nerds for quite some time. The technology behind it is based on findings in the field of quantum physics. The goal is to create a new generation of computers that can solve special tasks incredibly fast. In a fraction of the time, the world's fastest supercomputers would currently need. But how do they work? What are the problems? And who needs them anyway? Let's have a look. The fast evolution of computers has been the foundation of the ongoing digital revolution. It keeps influencing nearly every aspect of our daily lives. An average smartphone today is capable to do a lot more than a high-end PC from 15 years ago, for example. But right now, progress seems to be slowing down significantly. The reason? For over 40 years, computer development was all about minimalizing components. But there are physical boundaries. If the transistors get too small, they don't work reliably anymore. That's why big tech companies like Google and IBM are investing more and more money in the field of quantum computer research, as well as the NASA, the NSA and even the European Union. All computers work with a binary system. That means every information is decoded into a combination of the numbers 1 and 0. That information is stored on chips, to be more precise, on tiny so-called transistors on the chips, who are either activated 1 or off 0. One piece of information is called a bit. So how are quantum computers different? In case you have no idea what quantum physics are about, better switch off your sense of logic for a moment. In quantum physics, a subatomic particle, an electron or a photon, can be in two different locations at the same time. The phenomenon is called superposition. Thanks to this principle, a quantum bit or qubit can store a 1 and a 0 at the same time. As you expand the number of qubits, the machine becomes exponentially more powerful. That means much, much faster than a standard computer. The problem is that storing information in a quantum system for more than just a short time is very difficult. And this short coherence time leads to errors in calculations. Remember, Today's computers use fixed transistors to store information. But with quantum computers, the particle has to be able to move. Even tiny vibrations could falsify the results. So the researcher's goal is to extend the amount of time the particle will be stable. There are different approaches for that. Right now, the most promising ones are so-called superconducting circuits. Scientists have built qubits from materials that show quantum characteristics when cooled down to extremely low temperatures. And by low, I mean colder than in outer space. The machines that are necessary to guarantee the optimal surroundings for the qubits are huge and very noisy. So there's no way we will have them in our flats in the near future. Remember that I mentioned the NSA in the beginning? Why are secret services interested in the technology? Quantum computers still have a long way to go before they function reliably. But scientists are convinced they will be capable of doing one thing much better than today's computers. Prime factorization. Factorize what? You might remember it from math class. It's breaking down a number to its prime numbers. 21 equals 3 times 7. Easy, right? But it gets more difficult as soon as the numbers get higher. What about 98,207,545,153? Factorization is the basis of most digital encryption methods. Your chats on WhatsApp are encrypted based on the same principle. So far, mathematicians have not been able to create an algorithm that can perform prime factorization efficiently on a binary computer. These simply try out one possible combination after the other. To factorize a number with 232 digits could take up to 1,500 years. That's what scientist Peter Shaw calculated in 1994. But he also made a prediction how long a quantum computer would need for that task. About one day. That would completely change the field of cryptography. No wonder the NSA has been very interested in the technology from the beginning. The ability to run parallel tasks is also interesting when it comes to analyzing huge amounts of data. Especially in the field of AI, this could lead to tremendous progress. That's why Google, IBM and other companies have started a race for the first fully functioning quantum computer. Right now, we don't know for sure how successful Google has been so far. 
although they claim to present a quantum computer in 2019 that works faster than the current supercomputers. But we know that IBM has introduced the project IBM Q in early 2016. The computer works with 20 qubits at the moment and can be accessed by researchers and companies via a cloud server. But it's also an open source project. So if you feel like it, you could write some code for it and try it out. But be aware, that code would be very different from what works on your PC. And last but not least, the technology could lead to big progress in science. Today's computers are simply too slow to sufficiently calculate the possible outcome of biochemical processes, for example. Fully functional quantum computers could help find new vaccines and cures at a much higher pace. Also, the highly complex field of quantum physics could finally be approached in a more comprehensible way with highly complex quantum computers. In other fields, quantum computers don't have that much of an advantage. For serial tasks, like editing this video, where one step follows the next, they can't use their biggest talent, which is doing things simultaneously. So you don't have to be disappointed if quantum computers should never make their way into your living room. What do you think of the new technology? Let us know in the comments. And if you have a digital topic you would like us to cover, let us know as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye. <laughs>